Good morning, everybody. Welcome to um, Car Rep's presentation on the WISE 2K technology. Today we are um, we have the pleasure of giving you Hank, Hank Vandernet, who is the head of our research and development, and he is going to take us through to the uh, through the Car Rep um, uh, WISE 2K technology and uh, show you how it works as well as um, some test results that we have. So without further ado, I'll give this to Hank. Uh, if you would, wouldn't please mind um, muting yourselves for the duration um, and uh, we will take questions afterwards. You can also send them via chat. Thanks very much, enjoy. Okay, thank you, Auli. Okay, we're going to talk about our 2K products today, but perhaps it's wise to freshen up a little bit where 2K is about. If we start with liquid paint, it's not only the two components you have, the binder and the hardener, but they also have to react with each other. So that means you mix them together, you steer them, then the reaction starts already, you can applicate the paint and the reaction takes place and the polymerization makes eventually the hard film. So two components, but also it has to react with each other. That's important. Next to this, there is an aerosol on the can, uh, on, the, on the market uh, with the 2K products, packed in principle the same way as these two, only this has the hardener in a little tube inside the can. You have to activate that with a, a tool, then you puncture the capsule inside the can, the hardener comes free and mixes with the paint or the binder the solvents, and in this case, because it's an aerosol, also the propellant. And also from that moment, the reaction takes place. That means these two products have a pot life. As soon as they are mixed together, reaction starts. And from liquid epoxy paint, the pot life is, depending on what product you have, between 45 minutes and an hour and a half. They claim for this product that it is around one or two days. but at the beginning of the can, and that's the same here, you will use a different product than if you come at the end of the port life, because then the polymerization for a big part has already taken place. So far the 2K, now we come to our products. What we have done, we have stabilized a hardener for the epoxy and for the polyurethane. So for the polyurethane, we have stabilized a polyol uh, that is in the can available, not as a polyol, but blocked. And for the epoxy, we have an amine, which is blocked uh, and doesn't function as an amine and doesn't react, therefore, with the binder in the can. So that means you can pack them together in one compartment can. And the pot life is not limited because the reaction takes place because there is no reaction in the can. So that means you have an extended pot life two to three years. The principle of the, of the, of the, the hardening, I will explain you with this picture. What the blocked hardener, and that is in the case of the epoxy, the same as with the polyurethane, what it needs is humidity. And that's the nice thing of an aerosol can. If you have packed it all together in the can without a reaction, you activate the can by pushing the button, the spray comes out and you spray through the air. And what does the air contain? Water, humidity. And that's exactly what the product needs to hydrolyze. That means the hardener reacts with the water, becomes a full grown hardener, and eventually reacts on the surface together with the binder as a full grown two component product. That's in a nutshell, the way it works. If we talk about the products we have in our assortment, we have, if we start from the bottom, we have a primer, we have a filler. If you have bigger scratches to fill up the, the scratches, uh, uh, and we have colored top coats and we have a clear coat and that's in the epoxy. In the colors, we have a range of colors. You can see in our leaflets. Uh, and next to that, we have a two component polyurethane. 
working the same way as I already explained. The polyol is blocked in the can, doesn't react with the pre-polymer isocyanate. You spray it through the air, it picks up the humidity, the blocked polyol becomes a polyol and reacts one-on-one -on -one with the pre-polymer isocyanate. So then the quality of the products. Uh, you have a range of, of, of quality aspects. Uh, of course, the adhesion to the surface, metals, uh, non-ferros, non ferro metals, uh, the hardness measured in, uh, in Koenig, uh, Koenig pendles, uh, the gloss. Well, the primers, of course, don't have much gloss. They don't need a gloss, but the, the top coats and the clear coats, they have a gloss between 90 and 100% uh, under an angle of 60 degrees. Then, of course, epoxies, UV. What is the UV resistance of the epoxies? Uh, uh, that's also an aspect. And of course, in the application, it is an aerosol can. What is the drying time, dust dry time? Uh, what is the, the, the touch dry time? So, well, I'll talk you through those, those things. If we start with the rust protection, uh, I'll show you some example plates. Uh, this is a plate, has been 160 hours in the salt spray test of a 1K primer sold in the UK, UK uh, in the American market. And this is even a 2K primer product after 80 hours in the salt spray test. Keep these two in mind. I'll just put them on the table and I'll show you something else. This is our epoxy primer, not after 80 hours, not after 160 hours, but after 1000 hours in the same salt spray test. So compare 160 hours, 1000 hours primer. Then we have our filler, more or less the same as our primer. This is also the result after 1000 hours of salt spray test. Again, a 2K primer on the market, 80 hours, thousands of hours. That's the difference. So that's the rust protection. The adhesion we measure, I'll show you. We have a little machine for that. We have a plate. You coat the plate, you let the plate dry and harden. Then we glue this pawn on the paint with the two component epoxy and the pawn is pulled off the plate and the paint breaks. <coughs> Excuse me. The force is, uh, is measured in pounds per square inch and the force needed to get our epoxy films off the plate is around 150 to 160 PSI. So and then we come to the UV test. As you know, epoxies have the reputation that they can chalk easily. Uh, here I have an example of a one component MMR, BMR acryl polymer. After 600 hours in the QUV test, you can see it's still glossy. So it's a pretty good quality, even for a 1K product. The Delta E after 600 hours compared with the starting point was 0.7. Here you have the epoxy. Also after 600 hours in the QUV test. Is it? Yeah, there it is. You can also see the gloss is still there. And also here we measured the color difference in delta E between after 600 hours and the starting point and the delta E was 0.4. That's even better than the acrylic. So also in Q, Q UV, uh, UV resistance, the epoxy performs pretty well. If we come to the hardness, the pendle hardness, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's a, it's a pendle and that pendles up and down and it gets stopped by how hard or how soft the surface of the binder is. 
and that's called Koenig hardness. The pendles is a value for the hardness. Uh, if you have an alkyd-based paint, you have a Koenig hardness between 35, 40, and 50 pendles. If you have a 1K acrylic, you'll end up somewhere around 70. And if you have a 2K epoxy, you'll end up somewhere around 150 to 180, depending on the product. A primer is a little bit softer than a top coat, but that's the range where the hardness moves. So then we have the application. For all the products is valid that the dust dry time is between 15 and 25 minutes, depending on how thick the layer is sprayed. The dust dry time is uh, around an hour. That's, that's uh, then the, 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 the plates of the material you have sprayed can be touched, can be mounted on a car or whatever. So if you see then uh, the, the, the results, what can be done, that's perhaps also very interesting. Here we have a plate with the buildup of the products. Here you have the plain metal. We first applied a primer, then we applied the filler base coat metallic and the top coat polyurethane. So this one has been done in the presentation this evening. Base coat, polyurethane, top coat. So these are the results you can get with our products. Let me bring this back. So let's see where we are now. Once more, two components, two components packed separately, have to react with each other, pot life. Aerosol, two compartments, also pot life. Our products, no pot life. You can use it, you can put it away. Two weeks later, you need it, you shake it, you use it, and you can use it again. And that's, of course, a big difference with the conventional products on the market. And the result is a full-grown 2K product. I hope I didn't forget anything, but if there are questions, please do so, and we'll try to answer them in the proper way. Thank you, Henk. Um, I have a question uh, that came up. Uh, can you apply our top coats direct to metal? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. As a matter Ex of fact, I can show you. Um, here you have the top coat applied directly to metal. And I think this one is the same. Huh? Yeah. Here you see a fender where the top coat has been applied directly to the metal. So that means if you have uh, 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 motor compartments uh, or heavy duty uh, uh, parts of a car where people walk in and out of a, of a truck, uh, you can apply it directly on metal. Uh, so the, the, the trim coatings and uh, those kind of things, that it's, it's very suitable for that application too. Because it's a two component product. Once it's hardened, it has full resistance. It, is, it gives rust protection. It has a very high adhesion. It's, it's tough, it's hard. So it's a, it's a better product than a 1K product for all these applications. Does that answer your question? Yeah, so uh, what kind of applications? So would it be good for things like trims in a vehicle? Yeah. Uh, what kind of application methods can you see for it? Yeah, well, if you have the, 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 the trim application, uh, 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 motor compartments, uh, 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 where you walk in the trucks uh, 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 in and out with, uh, with, with, uh, with lifters, etc., that's where it is specially applied and, and designed for. It's a, it's, a, it's a tough, it's a real tough coating. So how about heat resistance? Could you use it in an engine or any of those parts? Uh, there is heat resistance, but it's not a heat resistance uh, 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 binder, but it can take temperatures till 120, 125 degrees. That's, that's no problem. 
That's Celsius. That is Celsius. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. That was very helpful. Those are the questions that we have received uh, okay. a few times. So it's good for people to know that. Yeah. Thank you very much. It was an excellent presentation. We appreciate your time. And uh, uh, we'll sign off for this time. If you have any further questions when uh, you are watching this um, uh, later on, we are going to post this online. Uh, please do reach out to our team and uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions and do further demonstrations as well. Thank you.